they said goodbye to the A-list a long time ago. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 British actors Hollywood won't cast anymore. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we take a look at British performers who used to be a mainstay in blockbuster American movies, and then, for a variety of reasons, fell out of favour with film industry influencers. But unless I miss my guess, we're in for one wild night. Number 10, Liz Hurley. I'd appreciate it if you could concentrate on our mission and give your libido a rest. When she wore that dress at the premiere of then-boyfriend Hugh Grant's Four Weddings and a Funeral, nobody could stop talking about Liz Hurley or the safety pins holding her iconic outfit together. What? Ultimately, her show-stealing style catapulted Liz to stardom, helping to land her roles in the hit comedy Austin Powers and a part as the devil in Bedazzled. How would you like to make one simple decision that'll change your life forever? Unfortunately, her stint on the silver screen was relatively short-lived, and nowadays her career is focused more on modelling and television. It's my bedroom, Mr. Price. You can no longer be of any service to me. I don't take it personally. Sadly, not many can. Number nine, Michael Sheen. Correct. Uh, that is absurd and a clear breach of the terms of our agreement. Michael Sheen seemed a regular in Hollywood in the late noughties, with a brilliant lead performance in Frost Nixon, plus a series of roles in less grounded flicks like Underworld and Twilight. I'm afraid your particular gifts are too valuable to destroy. Of course, he achieved all of that while also landing excellent parts back home. Nowadays, however, when it comes to Hollywood, he's often relegated to minor fare, even though his TV career in the UK has well and truly taken off first with Masters of Sex, and then with his casting in the 2019 serial Good Omens, based on the novel by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. Unless one of the seven begins to talk, that's the problem. Number eight, Ray Winston. If there's any bother, we'll have your bleeding guts. Right? I said right. Yes, sir. This English actor first gained a reputation for his hardman performances in British classics such as Scum, but his wide-ranging ability has allowed him to easily play a multitude of different characters. That bench, you oh. bastard! From crime to period dramas and starring in projects as diverse as the Nick Cave-penned Australian Western, The Proposition, and even the Scorsese gangster flick, The Departed, Winston has proven time and again to be one of the finest character actors of his generation. This is America. You don't make money, you're a f now what you gonna do? So, it's a shame that Hollywood seems to have gone quiet on him, but such is the nature of the business. Tinseltown is a fickle beast. It will be out this sentence. Number seven, Catherine Zeta-Jones. I just keep picturing a debt-ridden 30-year-old mother of two whose ex-husband is being compared to Pablo Escobar. I don't know anyone who wants to be with someone like that. Zeta Jones's acting talent seems as clear in critically acclaimed films like Traffic as much as in all action efforts like the Zorro movies. She can sing and dance too, and her star power used to be second to none. If you see any, be sure to point them out. So, the glamorous Welsh actress's almost complete disappearance from the big screen appears a strange and unexpected turn of events. Just tell me something positive, Arnie. Give me some good news, for Christ's sake. I'm sorry. According to reports, she has previously taken time out to focus on her family, but the grand return shows few signs of starting up. She did appear in the British movie remake of Dad's Army, but the less said about that, the better. We won't publish it. Number six, Clive Owen. Talk about shooting your load. To another intense actor, but one who's never quite managed to convince the Hollywood execs. This is pretty f up. Perhaps Clive Owen isn't especially associated with big budget productions, though he has been in his fair share, but not so much anymore. You son of a bitch. However, while Owen may be getting overlooked for blockbuster roles, we suspect it might be a purposeful plot on his part too, judging by the amount of independent and art house films he stars in. Either way, not since Children of Men or Elizabeth the Golden Age has he truly tried his hand at the box office big time. But that, Majesty, you eat it. Very nourishing. Number five, Hugh Grant. I don't suppose you have any advice, do you? No, no. 
There was once a time when Hugh Grant served as the epitome of mainstream British charm on the big screen. Great hat. Thanks. I bought especially. After the huge success of Four Weddings and a Funeral, he became the go-to lead for rom-coms in need of a bumbling bachelor type, scoring one hit after another. Until something happened. A few films he was in flopped, and Hollywood decided it just wasn't interested anymore. Well, I'm sort of um, taking a bit of time off at the moment. His charm certainly hasn't waned since his stint as an international star in the 90s and 2000s, but these days, the biggest films he appears in are the Paddington movies. Oh, yes. You're a very famous actor. Oh, Paul. <laughs> or used to be. Now you do dog food commercials. Number four, Gerard Butler. Fox Command, this is Golf One. Do you copy? The Scotsman, made famous by his turn as Leonidas in 300, was initially pegged to be one of Hollywood's next leading men, but it all went gradually wrong along the way. This is Sparta! A series of five-star flops and subpar action movies might have had something to do with it, although some are still tipping Butler to rise again, acknowledging that he has all the charm, ability, and physique to resurrect his career. Where I faint him. Where it at home, upon my brother's guard, even there, will I wash my fierce hand in his heart. Maybe if he tried something other than have a go hero in a disappointing thriller. Come on, Gerard, we believe in you. Bingo! So why don't you boys pack up your shit and head back to f Hedistan or wherever it is you're from? Number three, Kate Beckinsale. What do you think? I look alright. You look great. Will you marry me? You're too crazy for me. Kate Beckinsale was hot stuff in the 2000s, appearing in many a rom-com, action movie, and big Hollywood production. The Underworld movies, of course, remaining her best-remembered work. Well, that's my point. It's nothing but an ancient story. His story. The versatile and talented Londoner even made an appearance in Scorsese's The Aviator, playing Ava Gardner opposite Leonardo DiCaprio's Howard Hughes. There's nothing there, Howard. But has her run in Hollywood already ended? Because besides a brief return to Underworld in 2016, Kate doesn't seem to boast the same star pull she once had, sticking to TV and smaller productions mostly. I have seen so much war, so much killing. I cannot bear more. Number two, Rupert Grint. Wow. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm gonna go and... Uh... Two out of the trio of Harry Potter protagonists, Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson, have gone on to form formidably successful careers in Hollywood and their home, walking various red carpets with regularity. Cool. So why not Rupert Grint? Sure, he's been doing some quality theatre and TV work, but his boyish, roguish character is sorely missed on the big screen. Yeah, Charlie, where's the food? There's no food. I told you, no one's been here in over two years. Again, though, his absence might be self-imposed. Could it be that after Ron Weasley, much like Robert Pattinson after the sparkly vampire Edward, Grint's already grown tired of the blockbuster machine? Ron! Ron, where are you going? Number one, Orlando Bloom. Decide not to be a queen, and I will come to you. Sure, he's still in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, but what else? Without the Disney favourite Pirates franchise, Orlando Bloom is a forgotten man for modern moviegoers. You seem somewhat familiar. Have I threatened you before? I make a point of avoiding familiarity with pirates. Of course, lots of us remember him as the sharpshooting elf Legolas in The Lord of the Rings, but leading Hollywood roles since then have been very few and far between. What do you see? I see shapes of men. And of horses and the time when he carried Kingdom of Heaven all on his own seems an age ago. Bloom's early 2000s heyday promised so much. The intervening years show just how ruthlessly the Hollywood hype can evaporate. Before I lose it, I will burn it to the ground. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.